This video is going to be an all too short introduction to nonlinear models. Now, I'd like to be able to say more about nonlinear models, but I'm trying to contain these videos to be uh, delivered in small doses. So let's just see an introduction to nonlinear models that's going to start from the same theory we built up linear models. We will justify the closeness, at least symbolically, with like math notation uh, before we dive into a quick example in R. So let's see just how close linear and nonlinear models are for the way we've built up our understanding of linear models. Now, linear models have been introduced to us like this. Suppose you have response variables y indexed by little n that follow the normal distribution with a mean that depends on, here we'll simplify notation for a little bit, with a mean that depends on the nth observation of some explanatory variable. Now recognizing that not, not all observations are going to fit directly on our line of best fit. There's going to be some noise sigma squared. So the linear part really comes here. This is the mean of y depends, oops, I can spell that word, depends on x linearly. But in fact, we can build non-linear models through much of the same logic. We could say, let's take y, some response variable indexed by little n, to follow the normal distribution dependent on some function f that has to do with a coefficient vector beta and possibly multiple explanatory variables x. Now, even if the line is nonlinear, we don't expect all the data to fall on the line perfectly. So we'll assume there is some noise about the uh, of the observations about the line. And really, if you follow the likelihood framework all the way through, what you end up with is a simplified log likelihood that's a function of the coefficients beta dependent on the observed values x and y that looks strikingly similar to things we've seen before. We have the sum across all the observations, and we're going to be interested in adding up the difference between whatever our function predicts, given the nth value of our possibly many explanatory variables x, in squared terms. So in fact, what we have is residuals, the difference between whatever we observe and whatever our model predicts, residuals squared and added up. Hence, it all comes back to the same underlying idea behind sum of squared residuals. And with that in mind, we already know how to fit this idea in the world of R. We can just use optim to minimize this simplified log likelihood function. Let's give it a shot. I'm continuing to work um, based on some previous videos, so if this setup looks new to us, we should probably go watch a previous video on even just fitting linear models in R uh, will help us get up to speed here. I'm going to use the library ggplot2, in fact, I've already done it to make the plot that you see using the data set cars, where I'm trying to use the explanatory variable weight to predict miles per gallon within the city. ggplot allows us to very easily make this plot and fit a line through the data. And in fact, R's function lm really nicely lets us estimate the coefficients in this linear model. But what we're going to try to do is recognize that these data are curved a little bit, and it would be better to try to fit some sort of curve through the data than a line through the data. Now, let me take this opportunity to remind you that 
simply transforming explanatory variables does not make a model non-linear. For instance, if you just took the log of x, and you could do that both in the plot and in your model, such that you fit the same model you're looking at, nothing from R is going to complain. In fact, that is a linear model, and it looks like it fits really well. That is a linear model where we've simply just transformed the explanatory variable. But the coefficients, the intercept, and the coefficient on the explanatory variable, log of weight, are still added together linearly. So if we're going to use this video to introduce nonlinear models, we're going to have to do something a bit more sophisticated. So I have gone ahead and defined this function predict y nonlinearly. I'm using not great variable names to really make a point that this is a specific function that I've chosen to predict y nonlinearly. I'm going to have some sort of intercept term, and then I'm going to scale some sort of exponential term where I'm going to force the third coefficient to be positive by, in part, by putting this negative sign out in front of it. And here is where x is going to non-linearly show up in our data. That is actually the coefficients here are the non-linear part, where we have a linear sum here and then a non-linear exponential of some of those terms. So I'm going to use this function whoops, to help me write a simplified log likelihood based around that expression, which will be used to predict y. So I'm going to use my function predict y nonlinearly to predict y hat. And then I'm going to take the sum of the squared residuals based on whatever the mo whatever we observe minus whatever our model, our nonlinear model, predicts for y hat. I'm going to square those residuals and then add them all up. And that's what we're going to try to minimize with respect to the coefficient vector beta. So we will define that function. And then here in optim, Look, beta consists of a vector of length 3, so I'm going to need to initialize that vector with randomly chosen values. I'm going to minimize the function a nonlinear model. It's just a specific one. I'm going to continue to use the method lbfgs-b. I'm going to pass in as the x variable. Let's see. Well, really what I want is weight as the explanatory variable. But I'm looking at weight here and recognizing that these numbers are going to be a little bit too big for an exponential function. So you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to do this. I'm going to define weight in tons to be the variable weight divided by 2,000. And that will be my explanatory variable weight in tons. I'm going to define, keeping with this giving us new variable things, the response variable to be mpg city. And you know what? Let's put these in the data frame. I think that'll help us out uh, logically later. So here we go. Uh, x is going to be weight in tons. Y is going to be dfmpg, oh, I see now that I didn't actually need to do that, but that's okay. And then remember earlier when I said we're going to constrain the third element of beta to be positive? That's what that negative is uh, helping us do. I'm forced to put lower bounds here on these coefficient terms. So beta 1 is going to have as a lower bound negative infinity. Beta 2 is going to have as a lower bound negative infinity. But beta 3, I want to be positive. 
Now I'm not going to let 0 be a possible choice because that's going to do weird things inside my function. So instead I'll pick as a lower bound for beta 3 some value really close to 0, but not quite 0. For upper bounds, they all get to be infinity, and everything should work out from there. Now, let's see. We've defined our predictor, we've defined our function, we've defined our new variables. This should be sufficient. Convergence is 0 is a good start. It took 53 steps to work our way downhill. Now, these coefficients seem reasonable at first look, but math on a computer is hard. Let's just run Optim once or twice more to make sure that 14, 157, and 2 seem stable. 14, 157, and 2 seem stable. One more time, 14, 157, and 2 seem good. I like those values. So I'm going to say, let's extract the elements named par and store them in a vector named beta. That's good. One more check. Great. So if I wanted to make a plot based on this, I'd put into the data frame y hat. Look how convenient this is. We can predict y nonlinearly based on the beta we just estimated and the variable weight tons. That's not so bad. And then let's go about plotting our new model. We're going to want to put in points. Here, let's see if I can center this to help us out. We're going to want to put in points. Remember, we fit our model to weight tons. So we should put on the x-axis weight tons. MPG goes on the y-axis. And in a line, let's add in weight tons on the x-axis and y-hat on the y-axis. And there you have it. It is our first nonlinear model where we have fit an exponential curve through these data. And actually, the curve looks pretty good to me. And you know what else I like about this is watch this. If we predict y nonlinearly, because we chose this exponential form, it's got to be positive. So even if we try to predict, let's say, based on beta, a car that weighs four tons, we're still going to get out a positive prediction for miles per gallon. Now, I doubt you could do that with a, a line going through these data. At some point, a line would predict negative values for cars that weigh so much. But because we forced this exponential model on the data, and the exponential will never be zero so long as we constrained beta 3 to be positive. Uh, this exponential will never be zero. We'll never get negative predictions for miles per gallon. This turns out to be a totally reasonable model that fits nonlinearly based on this functional form through these data. Now, you got to remember, though, if you want to fit a different linear model, you'd have to change a different nonlinear model. You'd have to change the way you predict y nonlinearly. This is just one example of a nonlinear relationship between y and x.